Welcome to the Boxing Gossip Channel. Please hit subscribe if you're new. As always, thanks for tuning in. In breaking news, big news, but perhaps not unexpected news, Ahara Davis has inked a promotional deal with Frank Warren. Boxing Scene reports Ahara Davis has signed an exclusive promotional deal with Hall of Fame promoter Frank Warren and will make his BTM Box Nation debut at the O2 on Saturday the 14th of April. So that's on the Billy Joe Saunders and Martin Murray undercard. Um, the show also features Terry Flanagan uh, at versus Maurice Hooker. Um, there's various quotes from Ahara Davis saying he needs a fresh start. He wants to win a world title. And he believes he can do that with Frank Warren and MTK behind him. Um, BT Sports Box Nation viewers can expect excitement, entertainment, knockouts and good fights. The real Ahara Davis is back and I can't wait to show the world what I can do. Um, Frank Warren commented, Ahara is a quality fighter and one of the best out there. I'm delighted to welcome him to the team and we're looking forward to making his debut at us with us at the O2 on April the 14th. The super lightweight division is one of the most exciting weight classes in British boxing. There's no doubt about that. In our stable alone, we have the likes of Terry Flanagan, Jack Catterall, Joss Lever, Jeff Saunders. There's a lot of good fights to be made in the next year or so, and it's great for the fans because we're going to make sure these fights happen. So interesting stuff here. Um, not unexpected. Look, the Horror Davis story has been well covered. I'm not going to go over the whole Twitter comments again. It's been done to death by now. Uh, and, you know, obviously there was some acrimony with Eddie Hearn following on from the split. So it would kind of make sense for Ahara to work with Frank Warren. Uh, as Frank Warren said, he's got quite a busy stable at 140. Terry Flanagan fighting for a vacant title. Jack Catterall. Interestingly, he didn't mention Tyrone Nurse, who I would have thrown into that mix if I was Frank Warren. I wonder if... Tyrone Nurse is still working with Frank Warren. But yeah, he's got a, a good squad of fighters at 140. Names like Josh Lever, Jeff Saunders. I don't really see those guys kind of in the mix of the Ahara Davises and Jack Catterall's of this world right now. What I will say, for me, Ahara Davis is a mega marketable fighter. His personality outside of the ring has turned a lot of people off. He certainly said some things that have upset people. But sometimes the sad truth is that we love a baddie in boxing. And I think the other thing to factor in is there's some truth to the phrase that all publicity is good publicity or no publicity is bad publicity. And even though O'Hara Davis has had a heck of a lot of bad publicity in recent weeks, that publicity has probably only served to raise his profile and probably to generate more interest in him returning to the ring. He's got a bad loss against Josh Taylor. You know, there's no way of sugarcoating it. That's a loss, and it's a bad loss. The nature of the loss was pretty uh, difficult, and he didn't perform with as much credit as one would have hoped in that fight. Having said that, he is a very interesting fighter to watch. He does carry power. I think he has the potential to be a very, very entertaining fighter to watch the way he throws big punches, the way he sets them up. Um... And I think that combination of the style he brings inside the ring, as well as the hype he brings outside of the ring, really can make Ahara Davis a big, big, big commodity in world boxing. And I actually do believe he can win a world championship. I do. If Ahara Davis was to fight Terry Flanagan, for example, after Terry Flanagan presumably gets rid of Maurice Hooker, I'd make Ahara Davis very live in that fight. I'm not saying he's a favourite, but I'm saying I'd make him very, very live in that fight. He's lost to Josh Taylor, but he fought one of the worst fights you could ever fight in that fight. And for my money, Josh Taylor is already on the verge of being an elite boxer. Look, Josh Taylor will probably go on to be a multi-time, multi-division world champion. So, in five years' time, that Ahara Davis loss may not look quite as bad as it currently does. You know, we may say that Ahara Davis has lost to a truly elite fighter in Josh Taylor. And I'm not saying Ahara Davis is going to be a pound-for-pound -pound fighter or a dominant elite fighter. I do think he could well be good enough to win a version of a world title. And the fact that Terry Flanagan is fighting Maurice Hooker for a vacant title in the same division probably proves that to be true, actually. Because, you know, you couldn't say that uh, Ahara Davis would be out of his depth against either of those guys based on known form up at £140. So I think it's a big win for Frank Warren. I really do. Uh, I think Josh, uh, sorry, I think Ahara Davis will be a really kind of good character 
to having like that co-main event slot, either as the number two fight behind Billy Joe Saunders, um, you know, or, or, or Carl Frampton, or you know, be it Liam Smith or Terry Flanagan. I think he's a really, really good guy, and I think there is scope to rebuild him on BT Sports with these domestic matchups. You know, the likes of your uh, your Tyrone Nurses, maybe the likes of your Jack Catterall's, you know, maybe the guys like Josh Lever or Jeff Saunders, who Frank Warren has referenced. I think there's scope to build him back up that way and maybe square him off in a vacant, or not in a vacant title fight, in a WBO title fight against Harry Flanagan if he was to prove victorious. Uh, I think there's a real job to be done with Ahara Davis and I think he's the kind of guy who could take his public profile and celebrity to a whole new level. Um, you know, I think there's scope for him to be someone who's, who's very well known in the boxing community. Eddie Hearn, I think when he looks back at this situation, it may be a situation that in time he will wish he had handled differently. I believe that his reaction to the O'Hara Davis tweet was a knee-jerk reaction. Clearly, Eddie Hearn has a big business in Liverpool. He does business with a lot of Liverpool fighters. Um, and... Presumably, the suggestion that O'Hara Davis was poking a jibe at the Hillsborough disaster was deemed to be a big enough risk to the matchroom business that Eddie Hearn has, in a way, had a, a bit of a knee-jerk reaction of suspending him uh, from the show that he was due to fight on. Um, I think associated with that, it has appeared from an outsider's perspective that Eddie Hearn and The Sims, etc., have almost gone public to throw O'Hara Davis under the bus and they've kind of gone public to disagree with him and chastise him to protect their own name and I think that's meant a lot of boxing fans have had sympathy for O'Hara Davis when they may not previously have done. Uh, I also think it probably has served to raise his profile even further. Now look I'm not saying Eddie Hearn should have ever endorsed comments from O'Hara Davis you know I'm not sure that Eddie Hearn should have ever not distanced him himself from the comments, but perhaps in hindsight, we we now accept there is at least some debate as to whether O'Hara Davis's comments were ever even linked to the Hillsborough disaster. It was a bit swift of a knee-jerk reaction to not only remove him from the bill, but also to you know seemingly demonise him in the public eye. Now. They've created a situation that, to be honest, was somewhat predictable. A guy like Ahara Davis, good profile, good knockout ratio, interesting fighter to watch. He's clearly going to be a fighter who other promoters were interested in. And, yeah, Frank Warren's done what anyone in his position would do, and he's moved instantly, and he snapped him up. And, possibly, in due course, in time, that will be a loss for Eddie Hearn. I appreciate that right now O'Hara Davis is not a pay-per-view fighter. I appreciate he's not got the publicity of a Joshua or even the guy likes of a Bellew or, you know, um, one of those fighters, a Khan, for example. But if he's managed correctly, if he's managed in the right way, I believe O'Hara Davis does have the kind of game where he could get to that second tier of British boxing credibility. I don't think he's ever going to be a Tyson Fury or a Joshua or a Hay. Do I think he could be a Crawler or a Burns or a Bellew? Yeah, I think he could get his profile to that high. I think he could be involved in one or two big fights. I think he could get, you know, um, some real, real publicity in the sport. And potentially Frank Warren is the man to lead that charge and to get him there. I, for one, am interested in seeing Ahara Davis back. I've always found him interesting to watch as a fighter. Um, and even though some of his comments in the past have been unsavoury. And I'm not necessarily referring to the comments about the sun. I'm referring to some of his more historic comments that have been unsavoury. Uh, there has been part of me that has kind of enjoyed the way he's gone out to the ring with the Undertaker music. Um, and how, you know, he's done a few semi-outrageous interviews with various YouTube channels like IFL TV. There has been a small part of me that has enjoyed that sort of WWE style approach that Hara Davis has almost literally adopted by bringing out The Undertaker music. Let's see if this new start with Frank Warren um, is a success. I hope it is, both for Ahara and for Frank Warren. It'd be very, very, very interesting to see how it plays out. Um, but yeah, I think this is a, a potentially a piece of significant news. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below.
Are you interested in this? Do you think it's a big win for Frank Warren? Do you think Eddie Hearn's made a mistake? Please hit the thumbs up button to support this video. Please hit subscribe so you can check out all of my other stuff. As always, let me finish by saying thank you very much for tuning in. I do appreciate it. Cheers, guys.